Welcome and thank you for joining us. You are watching Millennium News Hour and I am Tanziba Naurin. Today we have brought up and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines. That was a lie. Trump's lawyer gets heated during questioning of former fixer Michael Cohen. Another Biden administration staffer resigns over U.S. stance on Gaza war. Justice Department takes major step toward rescheduling Mariona. Trump says he has no problem welcoming RFK Jr. to debates if he qualifies. Teen who ate spicy tortilla chip died of high chili consumption and had a heart defect, autopsy says. Senator Bob Menendez's wife, who faces bribery charges with him, has breast cancer. She, Putin, condemn U.S. Israeli military says five soldiers killed by friendly fire in northern Gaza, more troops to join Rafa operation. Slovak PM no longer in life-threatening condition after being shot, minister says. Controversial law, India issues first set of citizenship certificates to 14. China shows off robot dogs of war. Garuda, Indonesia flight makes emergency landing after engine fire. And Sunil Chetri announces retirement from international football. You were listening to headlines, now news in detail. Michael Cohen returned to the witness stand in Manhattan Criminal Court Thursday for a tense cross-examination with Donald Trump's defense attorneys who have been trying to paint him as a dishonest and unreliable narrator whose claims cannot be believed. In one heated exchange, defense lawyer Todd Blanche pushed Cohen about the details of a phone conversation he said he had with Trump on October 24, 2016 about the $130,000 hush money payment to porn actor Stormy Daniels. Cohen had testified he got a hold of Trump through his bodyguard Keith Schiller to discuss the Stormy Daniels matter and the resolution of it. Blanche noted the call was at 8.2 p.m. and lasted 90 seconds and at 8.4 p.m. Cohen texted Schiller the phone number of a 14-year-old he had complained had been prank calling him. He shouted that Cohen's account of talking to Trump that night was a lie. The real conversation was about the teenager, Blanche insisted. Cohen said he believed he was telling the truth based upon the records and documents he reviewed. We are not asking for your belief. This jury does not want to hear what you think happened, Blanche snapped. Prosecutors told Judge Yon Merchant this week that Cohen, Trump's former personal lawyer, is their final witness in the often sensational trial which began on April 15. Another staffer in United States President Joe Biden's administration has publicly resigned in protest of the U.S.'s continued support for Israel amid its war on Gaza. 
the Associated Press News Agency reported. Lily Greenberg Cole, a special assistant to the Chief of Staff in the U.S. Interior Department, wrote in her resignation letter that she could not, in good conscience, continue to represent the administration, AP reported on Wednesday. Cole, who is Jewish, also condemned comments Biden has made since the Gaza war began in October, including one where he warned there wouldn't be a Jew in the world who was safe without the existence of Israel. He is making Jews the face of the American war machine, and that is so deeply wrong, she told the news agency in an interview. A handful of Biden administration officials and appointees, including a former U.S. Army officer, have publicly stepped down over the U.S.'s Gaza policy since the conflict began on October 7. The Justice Department took a significant step toward rescheduling marijuana Thursday, formalizing its process to reclassify the drug as lower risk and remove it from a category in which it has been treated as more dangerous than fentanyl and meth. President Joe Biden announced the major move in a direct-to-camera video posted to his official account on X. This is monumental, Biden said in the message. It's an important move towards reversing long-standing inequities. Far too many lives have been upended because of a failed approach to marijuana, and I am committed to righting those wrongs. You have my word on it. The Biden administration has been signaling that it would move to reschedule the drug from Schedule 1, a strict classification including drugs like heroin, to the less stringent Schedule 3, which would for the first time acknowledge the drug's medical benefits at the federal level. The Drug Enforcement Administration submitted a notice of proposed rulemaking in the Federal Register on Thursday afternoon triggering a 60-day comment period that will allow members of the public to submit remarks regarding the rescheduling proposal before it is finalized. Former President Donald Trump said he has no problem with independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. joining him and President Joe Biden on stage if Kennedy meets the criteria for the June and September presidential debates. I would have no problem if he got whatever the threshold is, but he is very low and he seems to be heading in the other direction, in the wrong direction, Trump said in an interview with Charles Benson, the chief political reporter for WTMJ TV Milwaukee. I would have no problem with it though. If he qualified, I would have no problem. After months of speculation over whether Trump and Biden would even face off, both campaigns committed Wednesday to two debates on June 27 and September 10. Shortly after the debates were finalized, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. accused Trump and Biden of colluding to keep him off the stage. They are trying to exclude me from their debate because they are afraid I would win, Kennedy wrote in a post on X. A Massachusetts teen who participated in a spicy tortilla chip challenge on social media died from eating a large quantity of chili pepper extract and also had a congenital heart defect, according to autopsy results obtained by the Associated Press. Harris Oliver, a 10th grader from the city of Worcester, died on September 1, 2023, after eating the chip manufactured by Perky, a Texas-based subsidiary of the Hershey Kong. Parky pulled the product from store shelves shortly after Harry's death. The Associated Press sent an email seeking comment to Hershey on Thursday. A phone number listed for Harry's family was disconnected. The Associated Press left messages seeking comment with family friends. Harris died of cardiopulmonary arrest in the setting of recent ingestion of food substance with high capsaicin concentration, according to the autopsy from the chief office of the medical examiner. 
Capsaicin is the component that gives chili peppers their head. The autopsy also said that Harris had cardiomegaly, meaning an enlarged heart and a congenital defect described as myocardial breaching of the left anterior descending coronary artery. A myocardial breach occurs when a segment of a major artery of the heart runs within the heart muscle instead of an its surface, according to Dr. James Odelson, Chief of Cardiology at Tufts Medical Center. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around the various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on millennium news 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at tv such as sony samsung lg roku tv amazon tv and apple tv and also in all european countries and australia available with the sky network worldwide jago tv radiant iptv worldwide jago bd network and horizon satellite globally stay connected with millennium news hour to get the world news on your face nadine menendez the wife of senator bob menendez who is accused alongside her husband of taking hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes has stage 3 breast cancer the senator announced on thursday as a result of constant press inquiries and reporters following my wife, she has asked me to disclose her medical condition, Menendez of New Jersey said in a statement. Nadine is suffering from grade 3 breast cancer, which will require her to have mastectomy surgery. We are, of course, concerned about the seriousness and advanced stage of the disease. The news comes during the first week of Menendez's federal criminal, where he is accused of taking bribes in exchange for conducting official acts. The statement also said that Nadine Menendez will need additional surgery and possibly radiation treatment. We hope and pray for the best results, he said. We ask the press and the public to give her the time, space and privacy to deal with this challenging health condition as she undergoes surgery and recovery. Opening statements in the criminal trial began Wednesday, but Nadine Menendez was absent from the courtroom on Monday during jury selection. Her case was severed from her husband's by the judge in April because of her then undisclosed medical issue. Now it's time for global updates. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday condemned what they caused as increasingly aggressive U.S. behavior and pledged to deepen their country's already close defense and military ties. In a clear snub to Washington, whose top diplomat flew into China last month to try to persuade Beijing to scale back its relationship with Moscow, she signaled Beijing and Moscow saw eye to eye on a range of important issues including on Ukraine and would resist Western pressure to downgrade their ties. The China-Russia relationship today is hard-earned and the two sides need to cherish and nurture it, she told Putin. China is willing to jointly achieve the development and rejuvenation of our respective countries and work together to uphold fairness and justice in the world. A joint statement spoke of concerns about what were described as U.S. efforts to violate the strategic nuclear balance about global U.S. missile defense that threatened Russia and China 
and about U.S. plans for high-precision non-nuclear weapons. Putin, on his first overseas trip since being inaugurated this month for a new presidential term, described Moscow and Beijing's cooperation in world affairs as one of the main stabilizing factors in the international arena. The Israeli military said Thursday that five soldiers were killed and seven injured in a friendly fire incident in northern Gaza amid renewed battles in the area against regrouped Hamas militants. The Israel Defense Forces said it had opened an investigation into the deadly incident, which it said happened when the soldiers were hit by tank crossfire in Jabalia. While battles raged in the north, Israel's defense minister said that more troops would join the country's ground operation in Rafah, where an intensifying assault has sent hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fleeing the southern Gaza city where they had sought refuge. An initial investigation into the deaths of five IDF soldiers reveals that IDF tanks, located dozens of meters away, identified a weapon and fired shells at an IDF force nearby, the IDF said in a statement. This force had entered the northern part of Gaza and occupied buildings along a logistic route. The tanks fired two shells for unclear reasons, resulting in seven more soldiers being injured three severely. The statement added that the IDF is probing why the shells were fired and if the soldiers were mistaken for armed militants. The troops were members of the 202nd Battalion of the Paratroopers Brigade. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science-related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally stay connected with millennium news hour to get the world news on your face welcome back to millennium news hour you are watching latest global updates slovak prime minister robert fico is no longer in a life-threatening condition after he was shot in an assassination attempt when leaving a government meeting on Wednesday, a government minister said the gunman shot FICO 59 five times, initially leaving the prime minister in critical condition and undergoing surgery hours later on Wednesday evening. I was very shocked. Fortunately, as far as I know, the operation went well, and I guess in the end he will survive. He is not in a life threatening situation at this moment. Slovak Deputy Prime Minister and Environment Minister Thomas Taraba told the BBC's NewsHour. Taraba said one bullet went through Fico's stomach and a second hit a joint. News outlet Actuality.sk cited an unnamed source saying Fico was out of surgery and in a stable condition. India on Thursday granted citizenship to a first batch of 14 people under a controversial law that has been criticized for discriminating against Muslims midway through general elections in which religious divisions have taken center stage. The Citizenship Amendment Act grants citizenship to Hindus, Persis, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, and 
Christians who fled to India from Muslim majority Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan before December 31, 2014 because of religious persecution. Enacted in 2019, the law was not immediately implemented due to strong protests and sectarian violence in New Delhi and other places that resulted in the death of scores of people. India implemented the act in March weeks before the ongoing elections. On Thursday, the recipients were administered the oath of allegiance and granted citizenship after their documents were verified, the Home Minister said in a statement without elaborating on their identities. China's military on Thursday showed off its machine gun equipped robot battle dogs at the start of its biggest ever drills with Cambodian forces. As the United States frets about Beijing's growing influence in the Southeast Asian country, the 15 day exercise, dubbed Golden Dragon, also involves 14 warships three from China, two helicopters and 69 armored vehicles and tanks, and includes live fire, anti-terrorism and humanitarian rescue drills. The hardware on show included the so-called RoboDogs remote-controlled four-legged robots with automatic rifles mounted on their backs. Handlers kept the dogs of war on the leash, demonstrating only their walking capabilities to watching journalists and top brass, not their shooting skills. Opening the exercises, Cambodian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Wong Pisan said they would enhance the capabilities of the two armies in the fight against terrorism. Wong Pisan insisted Cambodia would never allow a foreign military base on its territory, echoing previous assertions by Cambodian leaders. A jetliner taking 468 people from Indonesia to Saudi Arabia made an emergency landing Wednesday due to an engine fire. The Garuda Indonesia Airlines said in the latest incident in the archipelago's poor safety record. The Indonesian flag carrier said the Garuda 1105 flight to Medina, operated by a Boeing 747-400, returned to its original airport in the Indonesian city of Makassar at 17.15 local time with all passengers unheard. The decision was made by the pilot in command immediately after takeoff, considering engine problems that required further examination after sparks of fire were observed in one of the engines, said Garuda President Director Irfan Satyaputra in a statement. There were 450 passengers and 18 crew members on the flight, Irfan said, including pilgrims for the Hajj, the days-long Muslim pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia. Footage posted on social media purported to show the plane's engine catching fire as it took off. This plane was grounded for a safety probe, Irfan said. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around the various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on millennium news 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at tv such as sony samsung lg roku tv amazon tv and apple tv and also in all european countries and australia available with the sky network worldwide jago tv radiant ip tv worldwide jago bd network and horizon satellite Globally, stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 18,378.49. 
The NYSC composite is increased by 157.68 points or 0.87%. Tokyo's stock close price is 38,385.73. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 29.67 points or 0.08%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,119.90. The Shanghai index is decreased by 25 point. 87 points or 0.82 percent. Hong Kong stock close price is 19,073.71. The Hang Seng index is decreased by 41.35 points or 0.22 percent. Bombay stock close price is 72,987.03. The Sensex index is decreased by 117.58 points or 0.16%. Let's have a look on today's sports story. India's football icon Sunil Chetri announced on Thursday that he will retire from international football after the FIFA World Cup qualification match against Kuwait on June 6. The national team captain shared his decision in a video posted on his, on his social media accounts. Chetri has played 150 matches for India, scoring 94 goals in a career spanning 20 years. There is one day that I never forget and remember it quite often is the first time I played for my country man. It was unbelievable. But the day before, morning of the day, Suki sir, my first national team coach, in the morning he came to me and he is like, you are going to start. I can tell you how I was feeling, man. I took my jersey, I sprayed some perfume on it, I have no idea why. So that day, everything that happened, once he told me, from breakfast to lunch and to the game and to my first goal in my debut to conceding late 80th minute, that day is probably that I will never forget and is one of the best days of my national team journey," Chetri said in a social media post. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. That was a lie. Trump's lawyer gets heated during questioning of former fixer Michael Cohen. Another Biden administration staffer resigns over U.S. stance on Gaza war. Justice Department takes major step toward rescheduling Mariona. Trump says he has no problem welcoming RFK Jr. to debates if he qualifies. Teen who ate a spicy tortilla chip died of high chili consumption and had a heart defect, autopsy says. Senator Bob Menendez's wife, who faces bribery charges with him, has breast cancer. She, Putin, condemn U.S. Israeli military says five soldiers killed by friendly fire in northern Gaza, more troops to join Rafa operation. Slovak PM no longer in life-threatening condition after being shot, minister says. Controversial law, India issues first set of citizenship certificates to 14. China shows off robot dogs of war. Garuda, Indonesia flight makes emergency landing after engine fire. And Sunil Chetri announces retirement from international football. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel, and visit our website. Our website address is www.millenniumnews24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.